Sorry about that, folks. We'll get, get our act together. All right, it's uh, 6.32, and we can call the meeting of uh, April 15th to order. Happy tax day, everybody. Hope everyone got their envelopes stamped today so you can send your taxes in the room. Uh, all right. I'm assuming everyone here is here for uh, as agenda items. No one here for public comment? Great. No public hearings, no appointments. So we'll first order of business, Chestnut Hill Properties. If you could please come in and sign up. You gonna upstand? Yeah, I'm gonna recuse myself from this discussion. Okay. okay. Oh, and point of order, Michael Swisher is sitting in for Michael Boy Boivier today. He's Mike's on vacation, so. Welcome. Thank you. Sorry, yeah. Sure. 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 No, go ahead. You're good. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Commission members. My name is Ken Clinton with Meridian Land Services, and I'm here on behalf of Chestnut Hill Properties in this matter. Um, as we requested uh, to be on the agenda, our explanation was fairly brief. Um, I would expect that many of you know the Chestnut Hill subdivision off of Old Blood Road on the west side of town. I had been before the Commission in 2014 seeking endorsement from this group for that subdivision 71 lots open space or cluster style served by sewer and water um, it was a long road it took quite a long time and uh, a lot of different input from a lot of different town departments and then we finally had conditional approval and finished off our state permitting and the um, submission plan set that I provided is the recorded sheets of the subdivision fully approved by both town and state etc you might see on the date of that the planning board signed that in November of 2016 and here we are April of 2019 and <coughs> this project has yet to get off the ground and, and start development um, just stepping back briefly back to our previous Conservation Commission discussions uh, we specifically were asking for support relative to some wetland crossings wetland impacts that were necessary on the site and to get further support with the subdivision since it's a cluster in an R1 zone uh, that required us to go before the zoning board for a variance uh, although there was sewer nearby it wasn't on site and so the zoning board ultimately granted a variance for a cluster in an R1 zone and furthermore granted six additional lots of density for sewer repair that's associated with them with the what was then called the Buker School off of Madeline Bennett Drive there were two areas that the sewer repair was needed after the school was constructed it was found to be inadequate and so technically that sewer was not accepted by the town and as condition of the subdivision approval there was repair required in two locations one on Bad Busick Road uh, Bad Busick Lake Road and the other one at Madeline Bennett um, one key reason why this particular project has not been started uh, is the cost of some of the off-site improvements and the risk associated with those constructions uh, in particular the sewer repair has been a, a fairly large item that although some fairly large developers have looked at this subdivision and said yes they're interested and it's a great project it's a great town to be in uh, there's still a need for single-family uh, homes however time and again they've walked away quite frankly and the clocks ticking on our permits as you can see as I noted it's been approved in 2016 we have both AOT and wetland permits that are ticking and the sewer connection permit has expired uh, which is a two-year permit 
that's fairly simple to to uh, get an extension on. When, when do those other permits expire? I don't have those dates exactly, Gage, but I can get them for you. I'm just curious. Uh, typically, we list them on the face of the plan, but Note 17 has the permits listed as far as their numbers, but not the dates of expiration. So as the days and months and years have gone by, uh, we've had to consider, well, what happens if the initial design of the subdivision, which is sewer and water cluster, um, it, it can't be sold, a developer can't come in and fund the offsite and upfront costs and take on the risk of some of the repair issues. Uh, w what are we to do? Uh, what are some of the options? And so we've had to go back into this with an open mind and say, what, what can we do? What are the next option or the option after that? So the very first option, if uh, we don't stay with this particular layout or in particular services with water and sewer is to go water and septic. Now, again, uh, cluster typically is water and sewer. We have in the past permitted and constructed a water and septic cluster called Windy Hollow. And that was actually done in the same time period when we were before this board or this commission last, where Windy Hollow is a subdivision uh, off of Tamazian Drive where water was available, certainly sewer was nowhere close, and we explained to the commission and ultimately the ZBA and the planning board that uh, it is in fact proper and appropriate in that case to have a cluster smaller than the, say, uh, 80,000 square foot uh, lots that the soils would otherwise dictate to have them be roughly an acre, an acre and a half uh, size lots with, with septic. And it was ultimately approved, fully approved by the town and state and constructed and now uh, it's fairly built out if maybe not one or two lots remain. And that has proved successful with no issues that I'm aware of. So in thinking of our options, there's the water with septic cluster to consider, or we could go back to the conventional subdivision, what people call the grid, which uh, instead of having uh, everything clustered in a portion of the property with open space, it's effectively going to be, uh, if pursued, lots and roads throughout the entire 193 or so acres. Uh, we'd prefer not to do that on many reasons. Uh, one, obviously it spreads out the development and removes all the open space, which is not something in, in in, in what we wanted out of this development. Uh, we fought very hard to have this particular layout with the open space. Uh, it likely would increase wetland impacts. Uh, it would eliminate the secondary access to along Medlin and Bennett to the school, which to us was a fairly substantial point of having two full access uh, points for the school for public safety. Uh, so, quite frankly, we're here to talk to you tonight about what we would call Plan B is the cluster subdivision, MVD water, and individual leads fields. Uh, I'll touch on very briefly the, uh, the typical cluster development with water and sewer that we've seen and we've looked at some examples specifically. Some of the lots are bordering right around 10,000 square feet, which is less than a quarter of an acre. Um, that's true with the Meadowood subdivision or more recently Lamontine's Greenfield Farms. Sewer and water uh, is, you know, they have a, a house on a 10,000 average square foot lot with all the roads clustered with as much open space as possible. Ironically, when we looked at these lots uh, for Old Blood Properties, the Chestnut Hill subdivision, we found the average to be just under 40,000. 39,000 and some change. So that's nearly four times the size of what we're finding is uh, more the norm of late for these sewer lots. Well, we, were, we weren't intending on that. We weren't looking to create necessarily a large lot sewer and water, but yet it just laid out that way. Uh, it seemed to fit, and with this particular arrangement, we turned up uh, 122.6 acres of open space. Well, as we started to evaluate whether it was truly feasible to have leach fields on these lots, uh, we turned to what we've been doing in town. We've turned to the state soil sizing requirements. We have fully mapped all the soils 
done test pits, mapped the wetlands. We have all the base data here to evaluate it. And quite simply, our answer is yes. Uh, technically, with our staff and what we know to be um, attainable for leach fields, this is very much suitable at these average lot sizes. Not to say that some lots, we've identified perhaps eight or 10 that are currently we believe is are undersized. And not by a factor of 50%, we're talking a factor of 20%. Uh, we would need probably to gather uh, 10,000, 15,000 square foot for each lot. And that could be accommodated through multiple lot line adjustments. We're not looking to change the roads, the wetland crossings, the drainage, all of that other permitting and design that's in place. We don't want to revisit that. There's no need to. Th what we would accomplish by changing some lot lines is making sure that they have the proper area for site loading, setbacks for leach fields, and that it's suitable for single family residential development on each lot. Now, I've mentioned before that there was a zoning decision to grant six extra lots for the sewer repair. At this time, if we pursued just this approach, we would drop down from 71 lots to 65. Yes, that math doesn't quite add up. There was one lot in particular that came out first. Uh, it's right at the intersection of Old Blood and Captain Bannon. It's not part of the 71 lot Chestnut Hill subdivision. It looks like it, it feels like it, but it actually came out first as a way to generate some funds for some design and consulting services for the rest of the 71. So that's why the math doesn't add up. So it's, it would, in this presentation, it would be 65 lots. And quite frankly, we could probably not only keep the 71 with individual leach fields, but probably add a few more based on what's out there for soils in the overall road and lotting configuration. Uh, it is conceivable that some of the open space uh, lots, we could adjust a lot line or two with them, but the intent would not be to substantially decrease uh, any of the, of the open space. I forgot to mention that we're 50% is required for the cluster of open space over the gross. We have 63 right now. Uh, a substantial amount that's about uh, I wrote down 26 extra acres beyond above and beyond what the minimum requirement is um, however it's too too early for us to say exactly where and how things might be adjusted our goal would be to adjust the lot lines within the lotting itself right now but uh, I can't say for sure how that'll turn out uh, we'd have to do uh, a few more test pits to prove uh, where we would need to be at that time so in short because we've started the public process, in fact, we've applied to the zoning board already, and we have a meeting coming up. Uh, we wanted to get out in front and explain to the public what we're looking at doing, what we're considering trying to do, uh, so people can be informed with the correct information and not you know, get nervous about what we're trying to do. We're, we're, we're simply trying to move this development forward um, in a way that best serves the land, our former and prior commitments relative to this design, as well as uh, seeing the rest of the project through with uh, the owner's desires. So I don't want to keep speaking and, and running along at my mouth, so I'm going to sit back and I'd like to respond to any questions that you have, and then hopefully you can wrap this up in time so Gage can get back to the Bruins game. <laughs> <laughs> So this, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I was going to say, so this really doesn't apply anymore. Well, what came in our te <laughs> technically, that is the current plan. Okay. So it is 100% applicable. However, that plan is predicated on sewer being ex repaired in the road, public roads, and then brought up to the site, which is all part of the plan. So if you go with this one with the septic, how big would the houses be? Would they be uh, along the size of? Same Lincoln? size. So they'd Same still size. be Every like four bedroom. four bedroom colonials? Sure. I'm not going to say colonials necessarily, oh, but okay. sure. Four bedroom, two and a half. The, yeah. And that's what we specifically looked at as far as the site loading, the ability for the lots to support a, a leach field and a septic system. That That's how we approached it. And what, what was the size for the lots again? It was like... It averages 39,000 and some change. Uh, we have a few larger lots that obviously 
uh, skew the number larger, but we also have a few smaller lots in the 25,000 square foot range that brings it back down. So as an average, it's 39,000 and some change. Mm -hmm. And incidentally, uh, I took a look at the, uh, what the state of New Hampshire DES has for lot size requirements and my, uh, one of my partners, Tom Kerr, is here with me. Um, he's a certified wetland scientist, soil scientist, and septic designer. So while I understand and can speak to things, he has the in-depth knowledge. So if you do ask a question that I can't answer, I'll ask for Tom McMahon. Okay. Thank you. So you're, you're talking about removing lots from the plan here? That's the second page of this plan has got a good layout? Yeah. So obviously what I – the, the plan set that you have – you can flip these pages yeah. and you can't tell how the, the overall context is really easily. Yeah. So I just figured if a couple of more exhibits and, and the first one, the cover sheet is really shows the overall, um, the portion of town and the amount of open space or committed conservation lands. I used this exhibit back in 2014. I think during the process I was corrected that some of the privately held conservation lots have been conveyed to the town. Uh, and I'm not saying that no, whoever owns them is entirely right, but the <coughs> conservation purposes of those laws or restrictions no, that's, that's pretty accurate. are instead. Um, and then the second one is more just an overall, so you can see, uh, so again, the, the context of how the lots are, are shaped. When you, when you say this is going down to 65 lots, we're not necessarily going to be losing lots on here. They're just going to be morphing into what was two is now one. Correct. Uh, so, the, the, so, so the development area is staying the same, but just yeah. the lot number. Yeah, we're not, like, as I said, we're not changing the road, the drainage, uh, overall design and intent, we're not changing that. So there'll be areas where two lots will be consolidated into a single lot, but even then perhaps we have to do a lot land adjustment one or two lots away yep. to shift certain areas and then bring some square footage from two or three lots away to a lot that was results in no, I, I just I just want people to understand it's not going to be like oh lot one seven eight three fourteen are all going away there's you know it's going to be the, the development size is staying the same yeah, and then they'd be renumbered right the lots okay. would be renumbered so it's likely one two forty five forty six the ones with wetlands are going to need some Yes. Jiggering. So, so if you see a lot that has more wetlands than uplands in it right now, which was uh, certainly appropriate given the setbacks for sewer, mm -hmm. there's a lot that we have to pay close attention to. In as a matter of fact, I think you mentioned 45 uh, was one of the lots that we identified yeah. as uh, as quite possible. 45 and 46. You're right on, Matt. However, that's not to say that if we added um, additional upland off the back of the lot. In that central open space, if you recall, and you may not, uh, that was not one of the two lots that were going to be conveyed to the town. They were going to be retained in fractional ownership, however, subject to conservation easement restrictions. So it's l technically open space, but if we, say, added 15,000 square feet to the back of lot 45, that could make it compliant in its current configuration with that additional area. So are you looking for us to recommend well, tonight, or what do you... If, if you'd feel comfortable with I I'd be thrilled with some memo to the community development staff uh, that understands what we're seeking to accomplish and feels it may be appropriate. Uh, I do have an excerpt from the master plan, which is really what we keyed on as we looked at the Windy Hollow project and realized that was a legitimate approach. Um, this is an excerpt out of the 2013 master plan, which was amended and adopted in 2014. Uh, part 5.8.2 is regulatory incentives, open space, landscaping and design. And I will just read a portion of it. And there was some interest in creating uh, residential cluster developments that allow open space to be set aside by permitting smaller individual lot sizes and reduced frontages. Such developments, however, are not permitted for developments on septic systems. If developed carefully, 
low density open space developments can result in significant open space conserva conservation, helping to reduce fragmentation of forests and wildlife, et cetera. In this particular case, they were recommending that instead of the small, really small, dense, as I mentioned, 10,000 square foot clusters with sewer and water, it is appropriate, and we've proven that it can work when you have a less dense leach field based cluster. Uh, instead of, again, using 80,000, 100 square foot lots and really using up every square foot of, of a piece of property f to prove the otherwise uh, underlying parent zoning requirements. So uh, this, this really, this, this master plan excerpt was really opened the door for us to really start considering that this is, this is legitimate. This is, a, a, and we've proven in with Windy Hollow that it can work. So that's a long answer to your no, question. Nope. We would love some level of endorsement that, uh, that this is appropriate because it does meet a master plan objective by protecting nearly two uh, of nearly 200 acres of land which was the overall parcel uh, we'd still be in the 120 ish range of of acreage for open space uh, which is when do you go in front of the planning board again that could be a while zoning board is next week however planning board uh, after that we'd have a lot of work to do to uh, finish proving individual lots and then reworking the plan so uh, I'd say my client would like us to be there tomorrow, but I think that's a little soon. So can reasonably, it could be two to three months, perhaps. And maybe at that point, it's only at a discussion level. But certainly, zoning boards first. Yes. Um, I, got a, I, I do have a question here. Mm -hmm. I see the cul-de-sac yes. ends right at the border property. Is that for possible future development of this only to see it's a private lot? It is a private lot right now, and, and we are frequently required to leave a stub uh, for future planning. It would be poor planning if we didn't. Uh, it's not always our choice as, as, uh, as I'm a consultant for the landowner and developer of one subdivision. We are frequently required to by a town to leave a stub. In this case, yes, it is. Uh, however, uh, I'm not aware of any plans at this point relative to that parcel. Thank you. That is pretty common. I mean, if you look up like Go Lab Marty Drive, it goes and then it continues on the way back, all the way back out to Babusik Lake again. Yeah. So these are the plans that we made, the comments and stuff that we made. Well, that does seem like a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, those are all, those, so th those notes and those are still in here then as they were originally. Yeah. The, uh, again, the, I think it was 2014, I want to say March or so that we're here on this project. And uh, it, it was a long road and, <laughs> and uh, I'll say, this, this group was fairly kind to us uh, overall, comparatively. But in the end, the amount of uh, crossings, the overall layout, I was extremely pleased with. Um, and, and this was fairly difficult, um, especially through AOT. And we had a lot of uh, DES requirements that we had to satisfy relative to wetlands and setbacks. And, and so it was a challenge, but uh, ultimately, all of these lots are, uh, are very high functioning lots. And with the exception of, like I said, eight to 10 or so that could be reworked. Uh, we could at least have 71, if not 75 lots in here, or, or even a few more, quite frankly, on, on Leachfield. What did, I think I missed when you explained that. Is that like a leaching field in there? Not leaching field, stormwater basin. Stormwater so basin. yes, so that's a stormwater feature, yes. Thank you. Yep. I'm trying to think who was here. You weren't, you weren't here yet. You were, you were here for this. I was here, yeah. Yeah, I think you, you were. 
think it was just coming I in. I think you just, I do, you just I started. I do remember Tim recusing himself for something, and I, I do remember <laughs> saying that. He's a man about town. He's got to be yeah. up, up for everything. <laughs> just to let you know also, uh, relative to you know when we may be before the planning board, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if if we move forward to the degree that we're, we, let's just say we're fortunate enough to get the variance from the zoning board, and then we get into redesign on some of the lots, I wouldn't be surprised that we come back before you for a little bit more in-depth explanation about the leach fields, the locations, why we feel a handful of them that are close for whatever reason or, or have don't have as much buffer as some may wish. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we come back here. So if you felt in general that the, the idea of this is reasonable, but it lacks the specifics at this time for right. you to formally endorse, but in theory you can get behind the idea of it perhaps, and then we commit to come back before the planning board stage, um, I'd be happy with that. I think that's reasonable. Okay. Um, and then and then we'd probably have Tom up on the mic with you. And then you could put him on the hot seat <laughs> as well. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that now if you'd like. Well, yeah. I mean, actually, if you wouldn't mind, you've, you've just yeah. I would love to. You know, obviously this is this is this is contentious. This, you know, there's been a lot of there's been a lot of discussion about this. So. Um, <laughs> I know you you haven't looked into this in depth for septic design, but in a site like this, do you have some kind of off the cuff remarks? And yeah, I, I looked at this. Um, you know, the state has lot sizing by soil type regulations, and we do have a site specific soil map on the property that was done by Peter Shower uh, Wetlands, and then I did, did quite a bit of review on that. We've done a lot of test pits out there, and uh, with I, I'm sorry. Would you just say your name nice? Oh, yeah, nice sure. Tom, 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 Tom Carr with Meridian Land Services. Sorry about Thank that. You. Um, so um, the lots are, most of the lots are almost large enough at state regulation size for, for on-site septic and on-site wells. Um, but with, uh, <clears throat> with, with uh, municipal water system, they allow quite a significant reduction in the lot size because you're not drawing water and trying to put a septic on the same lot. So based on the soil types and slopes that we have out there, uh, we're looking at about 25 to 31,000 square feet is where our lot sizes are gonna fall into with, with water and on-site septic. So if you, if you then look through these lots, um, you know, Ken has identified, you know, some lots less than 25, we know those are, have some issues. There are some lots that are, you know, 32, but have a lot of wetlands on them. So those are some issues. We're going to have to go through some much deeper calculations as we move through this, and that's why Ken alluded to the fact that w if we get through the zoning board successfully, we have quite a bit of work to do. Uh, we'll have to finish testing the lots and then you know, make sure our calculations are correct for each of the lots as we get ready to resubmit, because now we have to go submit to a uh, subsurface of DES for a subdivision approval. We didn't need to with sewer and water. It's not applicable. So this this puts it, this will put it now uh, in the secondary review with the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services. It, it was are sites like this? Are you thinking of traditional septic systems, or I know there's some new designs out there? Or yeah, these lots won't require. Uh, th they're large enough. They won't <clears throat> they won't be encumbered to the point where they'd need some sort of a pretreatment or specialized system on them. We'd use conventional septic systems. No pay straw mentioned, so I have no questions. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, okay, All guys. Right. Thank you very much for coming in. I appreciate it. I appreciate the heads up, time. and uh, yeah. we'll, we'll get a we'll get a note off to uh, Comdev. Okay, appreciate uh, your time with our our comments. So, thank you. Come on up. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Excuse me. Hi. 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 Hi.
familiar faces. <laughs> yeah, you have to turn that back on. Yeah. Um, okay. Is it a power button? Yeah. Well, that, will that not turn it on? Where? Next to your computer? That's oh, not right a mouse. Right next to me? That's not a mouse. <laughs> it sounded good. <laughs> We've got the right light switch the first time. <laughs> yeah. We wanted to press that button now. <laughs> I have there a screen. Oh, here it is. Oh, excellent. Come on. We can miss it. No, we can. Uh, you just remember the old TVs when you were growing up and you had to wait for this picture to grow. Yes. Around, yeah? <laughs> He's literally turn it off. It's like. <laughs> yeah, I know. So what, are you, what are you talking about, Tim? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Did everyone see that I, one? I, one more I almost thought I made a mistake by saying that because she's <laughs> probably <laughs> not old enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to like, be interested in a paper copy, I'm happy to hand those out. I'll just uh, want one great deal. If, yeah, I'd like to keep at least one so we can yeah, come in so with I'll the minutes. Yeah, I'll just pass that way. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So I'm Tracy Tarr with GZA. I'm a wetland scientist and wildlife biologist. And I know a few of you know me. If you'd like, I have a card. Can anybody just take me minutes or is there who's this crazy person? Sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll take one and we'll give it to her. Yeah. Did, yeah, could you make sure you sign in? There's a sign-in sheet oh, right yeah. there. That's eventually. Don't, not right now. You don't have to do it now. But. <laughs> Thanks. Some of you probably recall you hired us to do a mitigation study. I understand you've had some projects with DES that might not have gone as planned and that you could use a little guidance uh, with <laughs> mitigation projects. This is a view from Merrimack. So friendly way to say it. Hmm. Well, that's true, right? So our goal was to develop a GIS or geographic information system model uh, to help you identify and prioritize parcels. So not just say, you know, these uh, 200 parcels uh, might have value to you, but actually rank them for you. So you can see what ranks as number one in the model, two, and so on, to really help you focus in on, on good sites. And again, to optimize aquatic resource mitigation grant cycles. You guys are actually in the current cycle right now. Uh, so when you're ready to submit for funds, the, uh, this model is designed based on DES rules currently. Um, so that could help you focus on sites that would rank high in that cycle. And then, uh, applicants that propose wetland impacts in your town that require wetland mitigation are actually supposed to come to you and ask for a list of projects before they go and hunt for their own projects. So this would give you a list where you could give to applicants and post uh, so they can plan in advance, right? Because pretty much when they get to you with the design of a project, it's really hard to start a whole new conservation project. If they have a list in advance, they can start, right? And kind of leverage what, what's of interest to you. Um, and really, so what, what, in real terms, what that means is that um, they're pursuing projects that matter to you. And so I'm here with the model, but I absolutely want your feedback. Um, and then we'll re retweak the model so it represents what you need and want. And then the other nice thing about a model like this is you can actually leverage funds with other partners, uh, land trust for interest, other groups, right, and come to similar places and grow your pots of money. So just, oh, bummer. So you can see up top the title, it says, what is wetland mitigation? <laughs> that that uh, should be a little farther back. But really the purpose is Do to Do you have more slides that like that? Because like, we could fix that. Well, if, you can, if it doesn't take too long to fix, it'd yeah, be I nice. I, don't, I think it's pretty Because you're going to miss, I don't know, 10% of each slide. <laughs> there we go. So I'll talk while you fix that. Yeah, it's one of those, one of the rings yeah, is the size and one is focus. No, that's a small detail. I really think you have to move, move it closer. Move the projector yeah. back a little bit yeah, somehow. Yeah. Maybe put it on the big desk. There you go. No, forward. Forward, sorry. Yeah. To, yeah. Towards yeah. the screen. Yeah. Directionally challenged here. You want to put it here? There you go. I think you're getting there. Getting there. So that's the meat, right? You don't need our Perfect. fancy border at the top. Is that enough? <coughs> that's good, yeah. Thank you. So when we use the term wetland mitigation, we're talking about achieving no net loss of wetland functions and values. So for development projects uh, specifically. So in all cases, we're trying to protect uh, wetland functions for the term we typically use it. 
And it can be driven though by your town goals. So a wetland assessment might have 10 or 13 functions and you as a commission can decide what's most important to your community. The types of uh, mitigation. And again, this is more for folks watching on TV if that's relevant, um, you're aware of these. But land preservation, it's a permanent protection of predominantly upland areas to protect wetlands. So those, for instance, would be potentially easements or deed restrictions in some cases. Wetland restoration, when we use that term, we're talking about uh, removing fill or uh, restoring past dredging or drained wetlands to their historic condition to get those wetland functions and values. So one case might be tiling and drainage in an agricultural field, that that draining reduced the size of the wetland or the functions it's providing. So when you take out those features, if it's not an active agricultural field, then you can restore the wetland. And then wetland enhancement, it's a little different. You're, you have an existing wetland that you're tweaking a little bit. So the photo on the left is actually a project I was involved in where we planted forested wetland within an existing emergent area to bring in some of those forested wetland functions and values. The shading, uh, the cover for woodland birds that had been missing from past uses. And the fun part of that was it was also wetland restoration. It was an old route, so we removed pavement before we planted. So it had a uh, two for one special there. So what did we do for your analysis? Is it awkward I'm sitting by the way? Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. You can click better. It was a co-occurrence analysis where we took different data layers and overlapped them and properties with more points got a higher score. So it's additive and weighted. And your existing conservation land was ranked, but obviously we didn't include it in the top 20 because it's already protected by an easement or some other legal means. So you'll see um, on this property, on this map, I'll get to the punchline in a second. The data sources we used were uh, parcel boundaries that should overlap with your tax maps. Uh, geographically available wetland data. So it's not site specific, it's not by a wetland scientist, but national wetland inventory maps. So a broad brush of wetlands. New Hampshire hydrography to uh, capture those streams. Wildlife action plan data. Conservation lands uh, data because with DES's current system, if you're adjacent already protected property, your project gets ranked higher. So that's part of the model. Public roads, roads, unfortunately fragment land, so the more roads you have, the uh, less um, intact land you have. So can I, I have a quick question for you. Yeah. We, you've obviously been up in Three Redwood Woods before, mm -hmm. and the what we call the Gateway Trail, it's just, it's, which is in a, a woods road. Mm -hmm. uh, someone asked me about it the other day, if that's considered fragmenting that parcel. Uh, and it's not It's not paved, It's we have to keep mowing it, so. Yeah, I would argue it's not, because you're not preventing uh, wildlife Migration, for instance. No, if anything, it's increased it. Yeah, so I'd argue that's a case we're not. We're talking about often paved roads right, that have yeah, regular, so, yeah, with regular traffic. traffic and, okay. yeah. yeah, we we created a trail for a lot of the critters. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it's, if you, you go up, especially in like late August, you go up yeah. there at night, uh, it, the hawks just glide all the way down the road. Yeah. Waiting for something to squirm out. Yeah, yeah there might be cases of uh, more significant abandoned roads that right. might prevent movement, but I can't see that one doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah natural heritage data to the extent we have it. And there's a nice fun tool that all of you should look at, Aquatic Restoration Mapper, that's available online. Uh, anybody in the public can look at it. And what it does is it's incorporated into your model, but it's ranked certain road crossings, for instance, on where you can improve aquatic passage. Has data on known brook trout and other fish. Lots of really neat embedded data. So highly recommend that. And again, because it's a viewer, you don't need GIS at home. You can go in and click it and get that data. <coughs> so your results uh, scored range up to 25, so 0 to 25 for each parcel. There were five categories, and because that's horrible graphic in the light here. Here's your map. This is draft, so imagine draft stamp here. Blue, blue to the best. Those are ranked highest, and those are 15 to 25 points. Red is the lowest, but it's kind of logical. You can see here it's previously developed smaller lots that are your red. So what I like about this is it pretty much validates the model that we're not trying to capture those lots. So in your final version, perhaps we might drop the red and the orange, right? So you would never seek to conserve somebody's house, for instance, right? 
and then the green are the next category, so still important, but just not that top uh, group, so 10 to 14 points for the green. We'll look at that more in a sec. And again, just so you can kind of absorb this. Did, does, do any of the data sources take into account uh, some of the, the old trails and old roads? Like we have, we have Old Kings Highway that comes through a chunk of the town. Is any of that accounted for anywhere? Well, if you point that out to me, I can go and look back at the model and make sure it's not skewing things. But good news for you guys, as you see this map, you've already protected 17 of the top sites. So that's great. So you can see these uh, black line here. You, uh, based on granite data, those are existing conservation easements or other types of land that you've protected. So you've done a great job. The land you have done, it's in high ranking sites. Right? And then if you're a numbers geek, in that top category, 50 of Merrimax properties fall in that top category. There's over 300 uh, lots in that second category, and then 1,000 in the third category, and so on and so forth. So there's less properties, which is our goal, right, in those top tiers, which makes sense. And then I don't expect you to be able to read that. That's just a cue me to hand this out to you. <laughs> Memorize this, no. So I'll pass that. So what I hope you do is, I'm obviously just presenting this to you. You need time to ruminate and think about it and process this. If you go through these, I've seen a few that seem a little odd because they're developed. We can do another screening tool. For instance, you might know of landowners that are just not interested in any kind of conservation on their property. Perhaps we screen them out if we know that um, they don't want their property, you know, on this map, for instance. Or, you know, we had a project in front of us that is an approved subdivision. Um, that even though it's changing, it's um, another kind of subdivision. You may drop, you know, properties you know are being built right now that aren't reflected in the granite data. As one example. And then what we've done here is we've shown you anticipated mitigation type on the left. So preservation would be land protection, and restoration are um, examples of removing fill, so removing um, an old culvert or old tiles, things like that. Enhancement could be invasive species management. I know that's important um, to you guys. I've heard that before. <laughs> We've got plenty of it. <laughs> and then where you see, it's hard to see with this, uh, this color scheme right now, but as we drop the lower tiers, if that sounds good to you, these stars are aquatic mapper areas that show good restoration candidates for road work. So perhaps working with public works and things like that, again, leveraging monies um, to interest to increase aquatic passage to those sites and their restoration opportunities. <coughs> and whenever, whenever projects fall under a statewide database like this, they get ranked higher by DPS. Another reason to use a tool. Oh, so the stars are actually in that aquatic? They are. They are, okay. Yeah. Great. So again, please think about this, and then obviously you won't have input necessarily tonight, but you'll go back and think, and then we can uh, work on that model for you. Are, are, the, are the stars listed? Right now they're on the map, but just I can on, get you Just list. on the map? Yep. Yeah. Happy to do that. So what we did, too, was your top six sites we wanted to do a initial baseline wetland assessment again with GIS data and the wetland functions we're looking at are things like groundwater recharge discharge fish habitat sediment shoreline stabilization they're the functions that the wetlands providing they're not necessarily delineating exactly where the wetland is but what are the functions we expect so we looked at the New Hampshire method which is used uh, to compare wetlands at the townwide level it assesses 12 functions and values. What I like is it gives you a value for ranking. So unlike the highway methodology, which right now wetland applications uh, to the state have to use, which is principal or suitable, you, you get a number for each function. And again, widely used for mitigation and prime wetland ev evaluation. So a lot of utility. 
it just just as a note, um, when Jeff Littleton did a bunch of our work, he used the same method and gave us the same rankings on some of our other properties. Nice. So, so yeah. actually, um, knowing that, we can kind of incorporate that into the model and, and get all your data in one place if, that, if yeah. that's of interest. Okay. So there's no size mu multiplier anymore, the old method. Back when I first learned it, the bigger the wetland, the higher number you got, but that's no longer skewed that way. Your scores are 0 to 10. And about 8 to 10 are considered your higher scores. And I'm going to show you in a chart in a minute. That's why I'm giving you this background. Scores below 5 are typically um, not a great function, but they can show you, hey, this is maybe where we can restore a function. Is that? Yeah, it's from the beaver study. That's, that's <laughs> out in Watkins <Marcus> Forest. <laughs> so this was a water reservoir property? That's Watkins Forest. I believe right? you, you know better than me. Oh, you're good. We use uh, the drone yeah. out there. Yeah. yeah Gage uses his waders out there. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I know it. <laughs> I've gone under out there. Oh, oh yeah. no. That was gross. It's, uh, I hope you showered well, like in hydrogen peroxide. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. That's right at the end of that is where that, there's a deceiver, a beaver deceiver at the end of that. It's where the old log road, the old uh, cart road goes across. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely supporting the logging industry small. today, if you care to see that <laughs> close up. So your top six sites had diverse wetlands. So those codes up there indicate for one, uh, according to the National Wetland Inventory, you have forested and riverine wetlands, of course, in Merrimack. A lot of your higher value wetlands are actually associated with brooks and rivers. Not, not a huge surprise. Some have scrub shrub, that PSS1E on number three. And then look at six. Whew. Lots of wetland types there, scrub shrub, emergent, riverine, forested, and unconsolidated bottom. Okay. So when we looked at the top six sites, and remember this is just georeference data from a desktop analysis. We didn't, um, we didn't seek permission to see sites, and we also wanted to make sure these were your top six, but wanted to give you a flavor of how the wetlands are ranking. So with that GIS analysis, I've highlighted here the highest numbers. So as you approach seven, I think that's um, pretty significant, but you'll see site two had nine for flood storage. That's a really high number. You can see compared to the other sites, um, very, very high. So if that, for instance, was really important to Merrimack, you might seek that site. And then site six, I like it's diverse and ranks high for flood storage and nutrient transformation. Again, nu nutrient flavor. transformation is its ability to yeah, so take function, the nutrients, or? turn them into plants so that you're not polluting downstream and causing algal blooms and impacting water quality. Also keep in mind, though, with the New Hampshire method, these functions aren't meant to be additive. So just because one function doesn't rank high doesn't mean you shouldn't consider the other functions that do rank high. So wildlife, for instance, really high in two and five, a little lower in one, but one has great nutrient transformation. What I think would be a great tool is if you <coughs> narrow down the sites you like and you have interested willing landowners, we could do some site data to have better wetland lines and make sure those numbers are as accurate as possible. Just a thought. Okay, what do I see as the final steps here? You need to review the rankings and make sure they make sense to you. Look at the map. If anything seems weird, let me know and we'll reevaluate and adjust the model. And again, you might have different uh, priorities that aren't reflected in there. For instance, if you want us to uh, take out approved subdivisions, we can do that. Or um, we can also add a function if there's interested partners in a project, interested landowners that could add a point to the model. And obviously consider outreach for site evaluation. And then we're here to help uh, refine the model and then reassess your top five sites once we get a little feedback from you. Make sense? Mm -hmm. We got a lot of work to do. <laughs> <laughs> but what I like this is this can be you know a great tool for the planning board if you're yeah. again looking at a conservation subdivision if it ranks high in the method that's even more reason to make it work. And it's also a tool when you're deciding do I ask for conservation land in this design or not? So it can help, help guide your input. Any, 
any initial thoughts? That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's an initial thought. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, this we, is great. We appreciate the opportunity. It was a lot of fun to a real world project and use the, the state rules to do a, a ranking. So. Yeah, you, you highlighted some properties that weren't even on my radar screen. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would, though, put draft on this. We probably, you know, be careful how we post it until it's final and done. Yeah. Well, we could create quite the corridor through our town, couldn't we? Yeah, and one thing, you know, I just advocate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See the forest through the trees and, and don't focus just on the absolute ranking because, for instance, your your Site 17, hopefully that wasn't the site we were just talking about. Yep, um, yep. When you're <laughs> surrounded by blue and green, um, to me, that's just an obvious property to look at and yeah. pursue. So. It, actually, 17 was the property that was off the edge yeah. of that stop. Oh, so it wasn't. Yeah. yeah. The, the white, the white space. Uh, um, yeah. <laughs> oh no! Oh. I can see the maps. <laughs> yeah, we, we call it the donut hole. That's our nickname for it because we wrapped almost all the way is, around it. Yeah. Is that? Wow. So just the fact it's in the blue, that's really important. Yeah. The seventeen itself isn't yeah. as important. The, the numbers, the numbers that are on here are the, are the numbers of the ranking. Yep. That says Barbara Watson. That was just no, pulled off. No, a number of seventeens. Oh. Yeah, so the number oh, okay. You're looking, yeah, look at number oh, yeah. 17, not the point value. Okay. Oh, I know what you're saying. Yeah, you're right. Oh. You're right. So we have. Okay. Yeah, so your on numbering here? here does not correspond with your numbering here. Okay, let me. Uh, so the numbers, these will not coordinate, so my apologies. We change those. Yeah. But these should coordinate to the map? Yeah. All right, I'll look at that. We might have, there was one where it was a, uh, I think it was your transfer station, something like that, where I took it off. So I'll make sure that number okay. right for you. That would have been number four. Yeah. Did, it, did that shift everything? No, that didn't shift it either. So the point total is right. And again, the ranking is a little less important. The fact it's a top 20 is the important part. Yeah. So having 15 to 25 points shows it's in that blue. Yeah. yeah I, There's six, I think 17 might be the one that's missing. Okay. Right, yeah, yes. I think 17, yeah. Yeah, because I don't see it in the list when I look at the owners. Well, that's important to fix, so I'll fix that. <laughs> 18 <laughs> is scalar, and that's not screwed. Yeah, I think I think this num number just got bumped. Yeah. The nine good news is, is we actually could serve a couple of them. Yay! In between the time that you did <laughs> <Yeah>. your property <laughs> well, pull and now. That was the other thing is that we pull the conservation lands from granite. You have the most accurate information, so let us know, and we'll turn it into uh, the black hatching there. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so 19 on the map we yep. now own. Oh, nice. Oh. And it has a conservation deed on top of it, so. Woohoo. Oh, what's 13? But that down by Anheuser-Busch? 13? Yeah. 13 is the transfer yeah, station. Trans You're 18. No, waste, wastewater. Yeah. Wastewater, right, it's sorry. It's the wastewater damage. treatment plant. Mixed up with. So I, I don't I don't. We'll, we'll fix that. The numbers. Are, are, they, are the numbers aren't necessarily on parcels though. They're on areas. Is that accurate? They're associated with parcels. Okay. Yeah. So e literally each parcel in your town is ranked. Okay. And because I removed one, I just need to reconfigure that. I'm looking at, at the boat launch and, and Scalar, and that, that little parcel on top, I think, is Patterson's, isn't it? Yeah. yeah on top, that's Patterson. Patterson, yeah. And you might decide, you know, as I sit here and think about it myself, that because the number isn't that important, if we just go with the blue color, yeah. that might be more helpful to you. Yeah. So the town owns number nine on the map. So that 
does that mean if it didn't have a conservation easement, then it doesn't. No, it doesn't. So uh, what the radio control for? Yeah, yes. that that in the boat launch that itself. That boat launch. Yeah. What I'm saying is that just above it is that just above it there's a square and that, it's a that's square. that's the part that's uh, Patterson's parcel. Yeah. Yeah, and it doesn't have a number on it. No. But it's blue. It, and it, it should have a number. It's mm -hmm. <laughs> one well, a number on it. <laughs> no, there's a number of blues without numbers on it. It's just yeah. it's not in the top right. twenty. Right. Right. I'm just saying I want it to have our number on it. Okay, <laughs> gotcha. Right, you want a, you I want, want it. you want a number with, with black hash lines through it. Yes, I got oh. it. I got gotcha. you. Gotcha. Understood. <laughs> Wow, this is great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, Nick, we're all like you know, like, like, I know we're all there. Like, <laughs> no, that's a point. Yeah. <laughs> this is great. Thank you, Tracy. Great. Yeah, feel free to think about it and send comments, and we'll come back. So, I guess one other quick comment. So, yeah. right here where my pen is is state-owned land. Okay. Right next to it is Wildcat Falls or 80 acres that the town owns. Mm -hmm. So, state-owned land has black hashes through it. Does the black hashes indicate town on land or? The black it's is um, some kind of protection indicated in granite. Yeah, I don't f really, because I wasn't aware of any protection on that parcel. The, which one? The, the state owned one, the right along Everett. It's, it's right along the highway. Along, um, yeah, point to it, I'll check. Yeah, well, if you do find it has the protection. Sure. Well, you can you, you pass more that more along? Because I really wasn't aware of it. Definitely, yeah. yeah There's a lot of embedded data. Yeah. This is two pieces. Oh. And, and oh, this one right here. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the that's the that's the one they're actually trying to widen. They're going to widen the road and probably take some of it. Widening. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, right now the yeah they, they are going to widen yeah. along it potentially, but what we're what we've got is a informal agreement in a letter from from DOT that says. Um, that they're looking to utilize that parcel for wetland mitigation. Mm -hmm. and, and we're trying to convince them that um, we should be the, uh, the, uh, the owners of the mitigation when they're done. So either by easement or by great. total deed. Okay. So um, that's the letter well, you're familiar with. Well, at least it's blue, right? There. That's great. Yep. It's a great priority. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Yeah, there is some good wetlands on that parcel. Mm -hmm. Quick question for you. Yeah. That's my neighborhood. <laughs> star right there saying potential NHDES aquatic restoration map. Mm -hmm. It's like a culvert. You want me to check this one right here? A culvert that's banged up or something? That's what most of them are. Yeah. yeah okay. This one? Yeah, I'm yeah. curious about that. It should be a culvert, like but I'll say. I'll get the data. The bad bridge on Bedford Road that's getting fixed is starred. Yeah. And it's mm -hmm. currently getting fixed. Yeah, so. that project's underway. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And there's just like so much data on here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It'd be, be nice when we get the electronic one so we can do one of these with it, right? <laughs> so all good input. We don't want errors in there. So thank you. Yeah. This is amazing. Yeah. Oh, really good. good. Thank you. <laughs> so the, the other thing that caught my eye is Right in the middle of the map, near numbers 10 and 8, there looks like a bunch of housing parcels with a bunch of black hash going through it. It's probably some like condo open space. Yeah, yeah. That's on the other side of Wildcat Falls. Yeah. So like uh, Indian Rock. No, that's not. Yep, sorry. Hmm. So on my map, this says Brookfield. Brookfield Estates. Yeah, so that's what it's called out. They must have some kind of, okay. we're, we're all digging into the data. Yeah. They've got to have common land or something specified. Could be, see, but when you look at it, it doesn't look like there's a common parcel. It's just a whole bunch of parcels, but yeah. Okay. I think the DPW is there. Yep. I can't 
can't even find the roads now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because you can go to the end of Meeting House, and then there's the cemetery. And it's sort of kitty corner from that. Oh. Department of Public Works. Yeah. So time frame wise, what you're looking for us to have some feedback to you by whenever you, yeah. Oh, we don't want get it to me. Okay. We need to be quicker than whenever. I mean, yeah. you set yeah. the deadline, so you yeah. have to. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to agenda it, I guess. Right? Yeah. Steve, did an extra set of paperwork end up down by you? Yes. So we got a whole extra set? Oh, even awesome. Because I don't want to give these up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. My helper's just going to get my cord in the middle there. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a sign in. Thank you. Ooh, something there. out to you to you know figure out what the project on a certain you know what what the idea on a certain parcel is because sure. you know like I'm sure preservation doesn't always equal like wetland mitigation or I'm sorry um, mitigation doesn't always mean restoration yeah restoration doesn't always mean wetland restoration does it well, if you're applying for ARM funds, it would, but you might have your own goals that you pursue separate from DES's ARM fund. Mm -hmm. But if you want ARM fund money, you're protecting, preserving, repairing a, an aquatic resource. Okay. So, yeah. like the, the one that says uh, preservation enhancement, and one of the ones that says mm -hmm. preservation enhancement, that would be mostly uplands. Fields, yeah, so like the example I gave removing invasives or one of your top six uh, based on air review is a current agricultural land. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's almost always opportunities for wetland restoration where there might have been filling over time, um, alteration of the soil, getting tiles out and drainage, things like that. Okay. But we want to do a site review before we got more specific. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. We got, we got a lot to do. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, have to hear it twice. twice. Here it goes. No, the no. fan will shut down once the bulb is cool. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to break that thing anyway and get a new one. So yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure there's a one-to-one -one correlation there between breaking it and getting a new one. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I should break it on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> and it's on tape. Perfect. <laughs> Oh, we're going to get a big one. No, she says she's going to leave it now. Okay. Well, she she already she, she, is, is the one that you sent us, I don't know. A, a Other than the, the rankings, which I, I fussed over and clearly um, too much. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the color coding should be the same. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Great. Awesome. Thank you, Josie. Yeah. He just whips gonna be so mad when he hangs that in his room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, this is this is the, this one. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Thank you. See you. Yeah. Thank you. Wow. We got a ton of work to do. This is this is great. Between his parents. She gets up uh, first thing in the morning. Goes out to the building. Yeah. Yeah. This is what she's, she's very funny. Um, all right, I'm going to leave this with the uh, senior development, unfortunately. <laughs> 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 so if anybody needs to look at it, you could not. Because I, I, you know, I'm, I'm sure Tracy too. Would, she'll send this to us. She'll send this to me if I ask. So yeah, I can. We can send it out if you want to have it just for look at. Cool. Get something extra there. No. Oh, you cut it, Ron. Huh? questions about what she's asked us to do or about the project in general? No, no, there, we're good? there aren't a lot of conservation commission properties on there, so the, um, well, the, the, the things that we're looking for, a lot of them seem to be on private property. Right. But that's okay? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because we may be able to use, utilize funds from so if a developer is going to interrupt something, we might be able to utilize funds from that developer to do something on that private property that would help with the preservation or restoration or whatever is required. So, okay. Or maybe we could get an interest in that property okay. with the money. You know what I mean? So, it, And also, it's sort of a good thing for us because none of the glaring issues are on our property. Yay. So we're kind of doing our job. <laughs> yeah, and you know, if you look at the, you know, sh they said they ranked all the sites, and the sites that are ranked high, we've already, you know, we already have a, an interest in them. Right. So, <clears throat> you know, yay yeah, us. Yay yeah, us. Yay yeah, us. Yeah, yes. <laughs> all right. That was great. Um, okay. Uh, wildflower planting on conservation properties. This is something Gina has uh, sent me an email a while ago and I asked her to put together a little bit of information for us to, to look at and review. So, Gina. Okay. So, Gage, you asked if I would prepare for you some history, a proposal, um, a seed and plant pricing, and plant and establish guidelines. So for that, um, I'm just going to read through the history so people at home um, mm -hmm. who are watching understand where this is coming from. So beginning in the winter of 2006 and 2007, commercial beekeepers began reporting colony bee, honeybee colony loss rates of between 30 to 90% each winter, compared to a historic loss of 10 to 15%. So what would happen was the worker bees would leave the hive to forage, they'd leave the queen and the, the little beelings, but the workers didn't return, and the workers are necessary. Um, this decline in bees became known as the colony collapse disorder, and it's not only happening across the United States, it's also happening across Europe and in some Asian and African countries. It's a serious concern because bees are responsible for pollinating about one-third of the world's food supply. So it's not just something that's limited to commercial honeybees. Wild bee populations are suffering the same fate. So according to the Environmental Protection Agency, there is no one factor to blame. There are a number of theories to explain the loss of so many bees, including invasive mites, new or emerging diseases affecting bees, 
pesticide poisoning, including the use of, I can never pronounce this right, neonicotinoids, pesticides, changes to habitats where bees forage, and inadequate forage caused by the destruction of natural habitat. Other theories suggested that climate change and atmospheric electromagnetic radiation from cell phone towers could be interfering with bees' navigational mechanisms. So while the U.S. Department of Agriculture has taken the issue of declining bee population seriously and acted by proposing bills and restrictions on certain pesticides, there's much that individuals can do to protect our bees, including avoiding pesticides, providing native plants, and fresh water. So I am proposing that the Merrimack Conservation Commission begin a slow campaign to make some of our conservation lands more bee friendly, and that would be by planting native wildflowers that are favored by bees and other pollinators. So by planting a native um, perennial wildflower mix in a sunny location, we can provide the bees with energy during their travels. So in addition to providing a meal for bees, butterflies, and other pollinators, this will also benefit benefit birds and small animals that will eat the seeds. Whatever seeds are not eaten will grow the following year. According to the UNH Cooperative Extension, based on observations and trials in New Hampshire, that's a quote, based on observations and trials in New Hampshire, we formulated a basic mix of New Hampshire meadow plantings on medium to dry soils in full sun. This mix of wildflowers will support pollinators through the summer months and provide habitat for birds and other wildlife through the years. So I based the flowers that, that I am suggesting off of the UNH Cooperative Extension because I want to make sure that, that I'm not going off on some random sites. I want to make sure I'm Department of Agriculture, um, Environmental Protection Agency, and UNH Cooperative Extension so that everything is, is not wonky. Everything is what you guys would, would want that we can answer to. Um, as far as seeds, I chose the Vermont Wildflower Seed Company because they're a New England company. Um, their seeds are non-GMO and they're chemical free. And they're I great to deal with. Pardon me? They're great to deal with. I've, I have yeah. ordered from them before and I yeah, really do like them. Yeah. Um, I did not choose a wildflower mix. And the reason for that is um, because the wildflower mixes are beautiful and they mix annuals and um, perennials. And you look at the picture and there's this absolutely stunning field of wildflowers. And I'm worried that people are going to look at that stunning field and say, let's go get flowers. And this is not for, for people to pick. These are for the pollinators. I'm actually going to make up some signs that say, please don't pick the flowers and leave them for the bees. But what I chose, um, I chose some flowers that are pretty, pretty random for New Hampshire um, that, that you see, you'll see them along the roads um, just kind of growing. I, I chose... Um, Lanceleaf coreop coreopsis, which is just a yellow daisy-looking flower. Mm -hmm. I chose purple coneflowers, which are kind of a purple daisy-looking flower. Um, I have oxeye daisies um, down there, but I'm changing that to shasta daisies because oxeye daisies are actually a biennial, and the shasta daisy is a perennial. So a biennial will last two years, and if it hasn't dropped seeds, um, it's, it's not going to be bloomed. Um, the Shasta daisy has more of a root system. And the same issue with the black-eyed Susans, um, I'm going to swap that out for brown-eyed Susans. I'm taking the Joe Pye weed seed out because the more research I did, that is not listed as an invasive um, plant, but it is listed as aggressive, and we don't want aggressive plants in our, our meadow. Do we, do we have you replacing it with something or just taking no. it out? No. Um, I, I would like, just for the first year, just to give the, the bees a start. I would like to get an ounce of Cosmos, which is an annual. Um, technically, they, they will drop seeds, um, and they can come back the next year, the seeds can. But if we have finches in the area, the finches love Cosmos. They'll eat those seeds, too. Um, I would also love to get, at six ninety five. I'd like to get an ounce of Rocket Larkspur, just because they're pretty, and the butterflies will love them, and the bees will love them. Um, Cosmos and Larkspur are both annuals. So, um, oh, I had scarlet flax down there, so we could get that. I'm, I'm asking. Well, I, I was thinking, so is that in place of the Larkspur, is in place of the flax, or in addition to? I'll, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at both of them and decide. Okay. Either, either we'll get the car, the scarlet flax or the Cosmos, one or the other. I only really think we need one annual for the first year, because it's not going to come back. I don't want to waste the money on it, but. 
I can't guarantee that we're going to get any flowers out of the perennials the first year. Right. Normally, they, they will bloom the second year. So I just want something for something to have for the first year so that you know the bees and butterflies are like, hey, this is, this is something new. I'll come back next year. Would it be worthwhile to get two? A good. Two different types of something flowering for the I'd first year? To, I'd love to get both Cosmos and the... the um, I'm, I'm only asking for $50 because um, I think that I can get everything that I need for $50 and it's not a huge outlay of money in that way. I mean, Liz Petridis from um, the Wildcat Fall Subcommittee has offered to help. We do have a, a lot picked out that I would like your permission for and, um, and I'm sure I can get some other people to help too. Um, so the planting establishment guideline is the area at Wildcat Falls is on the Falls Loop Trail. It's just past the picnic bench. There's an area that she said there was a fire before. Do you remember yep. that? Yep. Okay. So, so it won't be, you know, I mean, it's going to be some work, but just to, to strip down to bare dirt an area of, I don't know, even if it's eight feet by eight feet, just to get a little meadow going, we can add to it next year. Um, or we can go out into other properties, depending on how well this works. But I don't want something that's so massive that it's going to be overwhelming. You know, this is my first time doing it. So I want to make sure that it's something that is manageable and I'm not wasting this $50. So. Yeah, so at this volume of seed, you're going to need something bigger than 8 by 8 Um. Okay, so the seed, oh, what do we have here? I have four ounces of seed, which is a quarter pound. So a quarter pound will cover 250 to 500 square feet. Right, so right. So that's that's 10 by 50, not 8 by 8. Okay. Big difference. Okay. Okay. 8 by 8 is 64 square feet. Okay. All right. Um, so you're talking four times the size of an yeah. 8 by 8. It's. I'm not assuming that everything is going to sprout. Yeah. Down, is yeah. the thing. Understood. Okay. So I can. We can. Pull yeah. more, I can get less seed. No, no. What, what I'm getting at is you, you, you actually you may want to try a few different spots in that area. Some okay. closer to the tree line, some in the middle, just to see what. Okay. You know what what grows. Okay. Okay. You know what that I mean? That sounds good. Yeah. So. That sounds good. Yeah, are you planning that on was tilling? Not my, what? Are you planning on tilling? Um, with a with a rake. I don't have a tiller. Basically, we're going to go out there. We're yeah, going to rip gonna out. Be, that's going to be tough work. Well, in that area, I, I just I know what you're talking about. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. With the fire is yeah. yeah. Alternately, what we can do is we can we can put down bags and try to kill everything down for a couple of weeks. I mean, if it comes to the point where we can't get it settled before we can plant in the fall, and then they'll come up in the spring. So you can literally plant wildflower seeds anytime between spring and fall, because it's it they're not going to bloom mm -hmm. the first year. The annuals well. I can see if I can fix my little tiller that's p somewhat portable and we could carry it out there and do it. Okay. So. Yeah. I might have something in my garage too. You never know what you're going to find in my garage. <laughs> 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 but um, I mean, and, and I'm going to wrestle up some other people to help too. Okay. You don't have some nifty toy? But Not tilling, no. Yeah, I've got a mini one with four inch tines on it. I think we have one of those. The little two cycle. Yeah. I think we have one of those too. I can take care of the weeds. How? I have a trimmer with licorice sized string. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, we guess so you, you can get it down, you can get the weeds down, but you're still going to. Right. If you're trying to get down the bare soil, yeah, that's going to be difficult. Yeah, I have a weed whacker with the. With, with instead of string, it's got a it's got a mini blades, plastic blades that you can put on it. It'll take down saplings of that to that size, easy, no problem. I I am also not above calling the high school and saying, look, do you have any honor students that are looking for some hours? Mm -hmm. So could I sign off for hours for people if they're looking for hours to help? Oh yeah, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> okay, because I know I know when the kids want to go into school in September, they need honors hours and they're looking to help, so. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I wouldn't be above doing that. Um, the only thing. <laughs> you I make it sound like it's a bad thing. No, I, I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Um, yeah. The only thing that I would probably need help with is every fall, um, you basically need to mow the field down. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure you but usually. Oh no, my, the string clip uh, or the whatever, those, those tools will just take them right down. 
and you can okay. and you want you want to just leave it in place when you knock it down, or you want to take it out of there. I would think leave it in place because you want the seeds to Correct. fall. Correct, right? That's what I would think now, too. The other thing too that's nice about the plants that I chose is deers don't like them. Yeah. So deers might like the cosmos, but deers don't like any of these annuals. Hmm. I mean, any of the perennials. And the other reason that I didn't go with the deer resistant one is because they had a lot of things in there that were like foxglove, which are poison. So no, the the ones that I have are not necessarily poisonous. They're just not things that deer want to eat. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and I was I was careful not to get poppies because I don't want anyone looking at us saying you're getting poppies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be I'm trying to think of everything yeah. here. Someone um, gets mad at us for planting poppies. We've got other issues to deal with. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but thank you. But anyway, so that's <laughs> that's my my goal. And and I would love to if this works, I'd love to do it again next year in another property and you know, just keep doing it. And and I'll make sure that we get water in there and mm -hmm. get them watered till they're established. Sure. They're most of them are very drought resistant, so once they do get going, it's not gonna be constantly yeah. having to water them. So I know it's not the most exciting No, I think this is great. Meadow, yeah. but no, it's don't don't underrate what you're doing. Yeah, this, it's a good is, idea. this is yeah. this is a great idea. It's yeah. not for we have things. a number of beekeepers in town. Yeah. And uh, you know, we every every time you know, a couple of times we sprayed for invasive. I mean, it's it it's a big deal. It's a big deal to these guys yeah. and and ladies. So I, I think this is a fabulous idea. Yeah. Yeah. My thought is is if we have a if you consider this an experiment, mm -hmm. if if the experiment goes well, we should probably you know speak to our agricultural commission and see if one of our our conservation properties aligns where we could do the most help for a farm. Yeah. Or, or something along that, that line, and the farm could be, you know, very generic from from a vegetables to an orchard to whatever, right? So anything that requires bees. So you, you, you mean every year couriers? Well, I'm not sure how they're doing now, but I know Eber used to have he had a couple of beekeepers in town bring their their boxes over, yeah. and he'd release them all over the orchard, and they'd, they'd be there for four or five days pollinating, and then they'd box them back up and take them home. Yeah. So, I mean, this is a really, I think this is a great idea. Well, the other thing that I thought would be fun, too, is um, when Cindy and I were at the, the Winter Carnival, you know, it's nice to have something to hang up, hand out to people. Mm -hmm. So if we had, if we could make our own little, I'm not going to have Wildflower, I mean, yeah, the Wildflower Vermont Company do it because your minimum is a 1,000 packets, but we could make our own packets and just put some seeds in and, and give them, so kids could start planting wildflowers in their own gardens at home or people. Mm -hmm. Just to, you know, not just our properties, but other. Yep. No, I think that's, that, that's that's exactly in line with the kind of outreach that we've been trying to get going. So I think that's a great idea. Okay. Yay. So so what was the cost for a thousand packets? I, um, it's about. I want to say it's about a buck a pack, but. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. That's that's a lot. Yeah, it is. I just was curious. So. Yeah. yeah. I think that we could. I mean, if we ordered. These are pretty reasonable, just buying an ounce here, an ounce there with different yeah. things and making our own blend. And then once we get the seeds established, you know, I can take a picture or I'm sure I can find a, a, you know, a free picture on Shutterstock or something like that and make our own little seed packet mm -hmm. to hand out because that would just be a nice little freebie and it's not, you know. When we get to the point where we're ready to do some work, we should talk to the Ag Culture, cause the Ag Culture Committee in town. Um, there may be people that would be very willing to donate time okay. to go, you know, and, you know, they probably have some quasi-commercial equipment that could go in there and till that up much yeah. quicker than that we could do it with a little, a little stuff. Yeah, see, and, and I want to make sure that, because I, I can't find it online, but I could swear I remember back in the, was it the 70s or 80s, didn't Kitty Dukakis have a thing where she was basically riding down the highway throwing out handfuls of seeds? And then we had these invasive, those were poppies. They, what were they? <laughs> no, I think they were, um, they were this big, they kind of looked like Sorry. dame's rockets. And I don't know if they were dame's rockets. Is that the invasive species? Yeah, um, I don't know. That and the purple loosestrife. No, they were, they it wasn't they purple loosestrife, but it Because they were planting similar. that in the middle of the highways to, for erosion control mm -hmm. until they found out it was so invasive. I think hers were called dame's rockets, but they were but then they, they, they ripped them all out because you can't even see them anymore. Hmm. But I I don't know. I just think that we need to be more controlled and not invasive. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, 
Yep. That's why, I, as I was going through, I'm like, hmm, I'm going to look at this Jill Kai weed a little closer. And, and it's like, there's invasive and then there's aggressive, but aggressive is still poop. Uh -huh. yep. Not good. So anyway, would I be out of line to make a motion for my own pro proposal? No. No. Nope. Okay. So I make a motion to approve the pollinator proposal and to um, let me take $50 from Fund 53 to spend on wildflower seeds as listed. Um, do I need to list them or can I just say wildflower seeds? No, I think that... I think this is the wildflower this is good seeds enough. contained in the proposal. As adjusted. As, as adjusted. <laughs> as adjusted. <laughs> Second. Um, I'd like to amend it by just the link, giving you like a ten percent, or yeah, I guess ten percent is only going to be <laughs> five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'd say not, you know not not to exceed seventy five dollars okay. worth of worth of seed. Okay. Personally. Anybody else have any questions and comments? Thank you for doing this, Gene. Oh Gene, I think pleasure. this is a great idea. I'm so excited for yeah. this. Yeah, I think this is a great idea. I mean, like I said, I'm not getting a whole lot of fulfillment looking for the word hey. Yeah. Sure it says <laughs> this, is, this is good. Yeah, so, uh, and, you know, and like Tim was saying, it's an experiment. This works well at Wildcat. I mean, there's no reason we can't do it, you know, at the other properties. There's great locations. Yeah. Full sun. Yeah. And we, we've got we've got full sun. We've got places we've got full sun. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's a, a little. We have you know a little flower garden um, at the entrance to Horse Hill and Amherst that Lynn has maintained for many years. And I know I think it was a couple of years ago she was really trying to to put you know bee friendly plants in there. Fortunately, we went kind of through that drought. That was you know it was hard to keep the water there. But yeah. um, so I'm sure if this works well, she would be a, you know a big one to help. So. All right. Well, we have a motion on the table. If you don't, no one wants to speak to it, I'll call a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes you know, one. Oh, okay. uh, you, yeah, you're I'm not a voting member tonight. tonight. <laughs> All right, so it passes 7 zero, zero. Awesome. Thank you. Perfect. Awesome. Gina, thank you very much for doing Yay. this. Okay, I'll get that order in and we'll start clearing. Yeah, that's great. Please keep us in loop because uh, I'd, I'd, like I'd like to do that. Okay, so if I need to borrow equipment or anything, I'll let you guys know. Yeah, absolutely. And we can, and I said, we can reach out to the Ag, ag Committee too. Um, do you know Bob McCabe? Mm, I've n I know the name. Yeah, he's a, uh, the he, he's, the ag he's the Ag Culture Chair. Um, I believe he's still the Ag Culture Chair. But the, we should actually, well, it's probably not going to be for a little while. We'll start and just get the, out the farmer's market. And he's always at the farmer's market too, so. If I have his contact info, we can. I we think can I talk. did meet him because I think I went to. He's a he's a memorable soul. I went to one of the <laughs> meetings. <laughs> yeah. If also, Gina, if you want to take this to somebody that knows bees. Okay. Uh, Hillside Apiary. Okay. Right uh, down the street from the police station. Mm-hmm. He sells mix. Mm -hmm. He's a. Is that the guy on top of the hill right there? Yeah, he, keep he was up? in the meeting before. He's come to this meeting a number of times. Yeah. He's well, uh, up by the hillside terrace. The right. Mix. Yeah, Alan. Um, oh boy, um, I can't remember. He's, he's just he's just up over the hill, and you can yeah, see his little yeah. signs for B. He's he's there all day during the week, okay. selling honey out of his home. Okay. And he's if you have a question about bees, he'll have the answer. Okay. And he's part of, there's a whole New Hampshire Beekeepers Association. Yeah, he's one of the biggest suppliers in the state for beekeeping and bee, uh, you know, sells the hives and everything. Okay. If I have questions, I shall ask him. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think the thing is, is once I get the flowers in, my job's the flowers. The bees know we'll know what to do with them. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but if, the, like, adjusting your mix, he might be a good person, he might be a good resource to say, what do you think of this? He might say this instead of this, and there you go. Yeah, and, and I mean, the other thing, too, is I was thinking clover, you know. Bees love clover, too, so. Yep. You know, I mean, the other thing that I was wondering, too, is, is, is it worthwhile to put, like, they, I don't know if they're just kind of like a, um, 
one of those things that they just want people, you know, it's like to be those butterfly houses that they used to have that are totally useless. But they have these bee motels now where like bees will go in, you know. So kind of like if you're, see, he's smirking. He's like, what? Well, maybe they're, that's where the workers are going and they're not coming back to the hive because they're in these <laughs> hotels with the, you know. There's a queen bee in there, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't say brothel. She said hotel. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Essentially what it is is it's, it's just little tubes. So if the bees need a place to go and get out of the rain, but the way I look at it is, you know, isn't that what, you know, I leave, I leave dead trees in my yard because that's where the woodpeckers and the, you know, the chickadees and everybody goes and does their thing there. So dead trees have a purpose. So bees will go there. I don't think they need me, you know, spending thirty nine ninety five plus shipping to get a bee motel. So <laughs> <laughs> but it would be interesting just, to know. I think we just need to be a little cognizant of the fact that if we put these gardens right in the pathways and near fa trails, people are going to be panic about getting stung so we well, just have I'm to, gonna have push to it back. yeah we have to kind of we're gonna have to keep it I'm gonna push it back accessible but kind of off the trail I think would be the further back I put it the, yeah. the less people will be inclined to go pick right. the flowers because yep. I can tell you right now if I had put one of those fancy mixes in with you know 27 different types of, of perennials people would be walking out uh, with a handful of yes. beautiful bouquets so it's true yeah and a few ticks to go along with yeah. the food, so. <laughs> Well, I remember back when I was working, somebody, somebody came in and they had a handful of daisies. And they were so proud of themselves. And they said, um, I was working as a secretary. They go, I saw some daisies, so I stopped and I picked you a bouquet. I'm like, oh, thank you. I'm like, OK. So I took them. And then I'm walking around looking for a vase to put these in. And then my hands started getting really, really itchy. Well, they were a nest of baby spiders. <laughs> and they're crawling down my hand and biting me. So my cautionary tale, people, don't pick the flowers. <laughs> you don't know what's in them. So. <laughs> Only you, Gina. Only me. <laughs> Along with your shoes and the mud and everything else. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, old business. Uh, we voted to approve the change in cost for Pete uh, when they some of the some of the boards they bought uh, when they went off sale when between the time got the quote and the time they bought them um, he submitted this again to us now uh, they ended up needing some more screws so they went back and bought another box of screws and he's asking for reimbursement of $30 $29.97 dollars for the recent rebuild of the bridge project I know you guys went out there and did a ton of bridge work out there yeah we got the more bridges than the project was proposed to cover as well we had more you know scraps here and there so we went and fixed a couple of smaller bridges you know, a lot of stuff got done yep yeah the pictures look good look great so Unless anyone's got any uh, any concern, I don't know if we can. I guess we voted the last time to for a, a raise on this of the uh, budget. I'd like to make a motion that we're gonna pay Peter back the twenty nine ninety seven out of fund fifty three for another box of screws. Second. Okay. Thank you. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? All right. Passes seven zero zero. Thank you. Thank you to all the volunteers that came out and yeah, you guys had a good crowd in the project. Yeah, yeah. it was nice. You guys had the fact you had a good crowd. How many people roughly? Um, eighteen mountain bikers and one hiker. <laughs> you you made the motion for the plan. You seconded that motion, right? Okay, uh, subcommittee updates. We were absent last our last meeting, so 
We've got some community updates since March. Beginning of March. Um, I was just going to say that we have a meeting for Horse Hill in uh, two weeks from tonight at 6.30 in this room. And, uh, at our last meeting, I have an update. Thank you for the help. You know, obviously the bridge project happened between that time. I'm sure Peter will talk about that in the bridge for Hostel. No meeting for Greater Woods until May. Okay. Cool. We did have a Wildcat Falls meeting on Tuesday, April second, um, and we discussed. The, um, the parking lot issues that are still ongoing that yep. need to be discussed. Um, I'm sorry, I had an email I was supposed to send to you and I neglected to do it, so I will, I'll get it to you. It's from Kyle Fox. Okay. I sent him that whole list, so he's, he's got his little personal opinions in there. If you send it to me, then I'll make sure that yeah. the subcommittee gets it. Mm -hmm. um, we, um, we had a Wildcat Falls cleanup day, but Liz and I were the only ones that showed up, so we basically walked the loop and picked up trash. Um, and we are going to. Do we know? I don't. Did I know about that? No. You know what? It was one of those things that we didn't get a lot of um, of publicity on. Oh, okay. So we were hoping somebody would come up with a chainsaw, but that didn't happen. So when that didn't happen, I can't even remember if we. I think it, it kind of happened really fast after the meeting. Oh, it's okay. Like, oh, look, it's cleanup. So we're going to do something else on um, Earth Day, I believe we are. I'll, I'll let you know. Um, essentially, we need. There's not a lot to clean up, but there are a couple of trees down, so we essentially need a, a chainsaw or two, and people to go and haul the the branches and the the log parts out. Tell me where they are, and I'll do it. Okay. Like yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll ask Liz. <laughs> yeah, we just we we, do, we want to be careful about having. Yeah, you don't want a. You know, Joe homeowner with a chainsaw and no protective gear out there yeah the last last year somebody came out with a chainsaw and they did a good Probably job nothing no protective gear no, and they stuff. did oh, okay. they did yeah they oh, put glasses yeah. and everything on so there was no blood with all spilled. the stuff yeah I didn't need to pull off my tourniquet and wrap it around them or anything <laughs> and for those people who are listening who thinks that's just a big joke I bet that stuff costs you less than your deductible on the on, at an emergency room <laughs> so, <laughs> just to put that perspective. Okay, I'll ask Liz where the trees are. Okay. Um, and then what else? We we lamented about the lack of snow and we couldn't have our moonlight snowshoe walk. So, hopefully next year we're already talking about how we will try for December. If that doesn't work, we'll try for January. If that doesn't work, we'll try for February. Good. Um, and then what else? That was it. No, that was, oh, Earth Day. Um, we are going to try to get some people out for Earth Day, but other than that. Well, isn't it technically the Sunday? It, it's Monday the 22nd, but I think, like oh. you said, okay. observed or whatever. Right. Well, Sunday's Easter. Right, I know. That's, right, what, I was that's what I was curious. Saturday. Okay. Yeah. Why don't you tell everyone it's going to be an Easter egg hunt, maybe under a trash? <laughs> 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 Get all the little kids at Ellie out there. No, it's a beer can. <laughs> I'd go. <laughs> Get the teenagers out there. <laughs> anyway, okay. I will ask them where the down trees are. Okay. Yeah, just shoot me an email. Yeah, and then what we'll do is when we go out on Earth Day, if you're out there cutting them up, we'll just go and move them off. You're smiling. Yeah, yeah. it'll be gone. Yeah. It'll be gone. <laughs> so good. Just let me know where they are. Okay, I will. Thank you. Okay, that's it. Cool. Okay, right. I have some different correspondence. Fire away. <clears throat> so, Wendy. Oh, okay. Uh, Weatherby reached out to me and asked about the website because it's been kind of dormant. We had, you know, we had a, an arrangement with them that we really didn't do a whole lot with and, uh, and I'm curious if there's anyone in the room that would like to manage the website and revive and get things going forward because I just have been clearly not able to do that for the last year. So, 
so. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, it's it, it's not it's not really so much managing the website itself, right? You're you're managing the relationship between us and Weatherby Creative. Yeah. I mean, we we have we have a, a budget set aside that we voted for to get some work done. You know, we we're man just it's going to be managing the managing us. All right. What do you want to mm -hmm. see? What do you want on there? What do you need to have done? I mean, I I know you do some. You do some uploading of documents and some of that stuff, so. Yeah, so there's some of that, and then there's a, you know, the, the, the main page needs to be updated every now and then. It hasn't really been touched, you know, since the seedlings were finished last year, so. And the seedlings are coming up. Right, so. Steve's, Steve's going to pick up the seedlings, so our <coughs> seedlings are, are mm -hmm. close to being here, so it's yeah. going to be at least a year. <laughs> yeah, so I, I throw that out there. I mean, as it is, it seems to be working for us for what we have, but it could do a whole lot more if it got more attention, but with this Chapter 111 activity going on, I can't do both. So, which is something I wanted to bring up as well. Yep. So, uh, so I'm, I'm offering it up if someone would like it to, to kind of take it over and, and own it. I'd be happy to explain how to do things and all that. Just let me know, keep it in mind. So in the meantime, I'll let Wendy know that, you know, it's gonna be slow for a little while. Okay. So. Yeah, well, yeah, we, I can probably take the reins of that as long as there's no technical skills required. Now, if you can, if you can do Word, you can do website. Can do Word. I yeah. can't get the town email on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could fix that too, right? We can yeah. fix that yeah. after the meeting. Yeah. 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 Don't don't feel bad. I can't get the town email on my phone either. Boston's <laughs> 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 is now Boston. Oh, is now Boston. There was a way oh, to get sorry. that yeah. off. Yeah. Yeah. What did we do? Did we block them or? I asked that whole yeah. I asked that to be blocked. So you shouldn't. You you're still getting them now? Oh yeah. Oh. Daily. Almost hourly. Oh, wow. To your to your message directly or to to the Merrimack email. Wow. To, to your email directly or to the out of the 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 group email. I don't know. I've never opened one. We have to look at the oh, header and see I who it's addressed to. I know how I got him off. I opened it and I told him to stop sending me stuff. Yeah. 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 Hit the un un says you can unsubscribe. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I got them to stop. Oh. So yeah. you have to open it. And then scroll down and say unsubscribe, and, and they'll stop who sending. The person was. I, was ready to click it. I was too, and then I finally, out of desperation, said, "Do it." That's how I did it. Yeah, we can uh, we can find that and just send that to Chuck and have him, you know, disallow that that sender domain. Yeah. That domain, and it'll just stop it altogether. So I thought I, I thought it already stopped because I'm not getting on my phone any longer. So I figured it stopped. So all right, sorry about that. We can maybe we can unsubscribe to them. <laughs> I usually try to block their domain because I don't want them to realize that they're reaching a valid e email address. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think I tried blocking it and it didn't work, so I unsubscribed. <laughs> all right. Chapter 111, what else would you like to? Well, so we all need to move on to the next phase, and therefore I need to wrap up the homework I've been doing. And so I was. I work good to deadlines, so I need to give myself a deadline. So I was wondering if the next meeting or the meeting after you want to devote probably at least a half an hour, if not 45 minutes, to Chapter 111. Priority with, one, yeah, with, with the goal of uh, reminding everybody what the project's all about, uh, going over the updates that we've learned by doing the deed research, uh, and, and, then, and then start the conversation as to categorizing properties that we may want to uh, codify rules and or regulations on and and some that I'll recommend that we don't so so April is an interesting month because we have five Mondays yep five, April. five yeah right. so that means our next meeting is not until uh, the sixth mm -hmm. so it's that's three weeks from now we could do it next meeting or the do you meeting want, after. Just, well, that's the thing. So you, I don't, I don't. You want a deadline? That's fine. Do you want three I weeks from now, or do you want five weeks? From I now? can do three weeks from now. Okay. Yeah, because I plowed through quite a bit of it. So. Okay. That's going to be the week. That's going to be the last meeting prior to the seedling giveaway. Yeah. Not that that's a big deal, but um, I know Steve's going to Steve's sorry going to go get the seedlings this time, but. I'm not going to be here for the seedling giveaway. That's, mm -hmm. uh, I need, need someone to kind of 
deal with that stuff. I'm going to be at a graduation. So, so I think I'm before I forget. Cool. Yeah. All right, so we're going to do it on the 6th? Yeah. Do you need my computer for that? Yeah, I don't think so. Wise choice. <laughs> You've seen my computer. <laughs> Okay. Anything else? Nope. All right. Um, any other old business or meeting? No. The details about the details on the Earth Day cleanup is that all on the town website? Isn't there an organized? Yeah. So yeah, Parks and Rec is doing yeah. something. Yeah. We got to talk to them too. Um, they've been very helpful in the past, advertising for us for their because they use the constant contact. I want to see if we can get some kind of formal agreement with them on, on how to use that. So we're not, you know, just embalming them at the late last minute, going, "Hey, we need some help," because uh, Matt's been really help. Matt's been super, super helpful. Gasparius getting the getting the word out for us. So, did did, did you talk to him about that uh, cleanup crew there? Yes. We. Uh, I'm going to talk about that now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we might as well. So, uh, World Environment Day, yeah, which isn't until June fifth. Um, the company that I work for has two project teams. One's going to Wasserman Park, and the other one's going to Scalar. So, wow. unknown how many people it'll be, but last year it was over thirty. So, should be a pretty good turnout and. Should be able to get a, quite a few projects done. Uh, uh, Mike, pull, pull tires too. Yeah, well, Mike's gonna, you know, see if we can get DPW, and if we can, then we're gonna do yep. big stuff as well. So it's Sklar, and what was the other? Uh, Wasserman. Wasserman. Sklar be interesting. You know, we've got a lot of stuff out there the last time. You know, it's gonna be you're gonna have to look a little harder. Yeah. You know. Yeah, especially in June, stuff's yeah. going to be growing. Yeah. So I know Mike's gone in a couple of times and made a couple of piles, you know, of things. Yeah. And maybe he and I will do a little more of that before everything really starts growing. What about the, um, what was that group that was looking, they were going to go camp? Oh, the SCA. SCA. Yep. Yeah, so that's um, the hitch, and it was due... Um, late March, the request. Uh, it's ten thousand five hundred dollars for an eleven day hitch. So the ten thousand five hundred dollars funds them, and they need a place to camp or yeah. stay. Yep. And it's ten days. It may be something that we want to look at next year, and it may be a. I think the bypass yep. of Greater Road is is a good project for them. Because they have forestry experience, uh, timber experience. They can use timbers. Um, they have tools, and you know they, they bring everything with them. Um, and I think you know, as far as if we were gonna have that road built right. by a contractor, it would be it's gonna be ten thousand dollars. Well over ten thousand yeah. dollars. So I think having that group, you know, and they work for it's an eleven. 11 days and I think it's 10 days on and one day of like education in there right so I think it'll be better next year I'm gonna follow a couple of the projects that they're doing this year and I'll have more knowledge next year of what I saw a project that they did last year and I was impressed but then I was told it was like a double hitch and I was like, okay, that, that explains it. Because I was like, there's no way they did this in 12 10 days. people could have done this in 10 days. So, and it was on the place. It was on at Bearbrook State Park. So it was where they live. So there was like their home turf. And they, last year were very under, they didn't have enough projects. And this year they think they're in the same ballpark. So I don't know if the structure will change next year or what. But they were really interested in having us 
come up with a project for this year. I just think it was a little premature. Yeah, a little late. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have a meeting. Right. You know, in a time frame when I was speaking with him, so. Did you ask Matt about them staying at Mattacook? I did. And, you know, he needed more specifics on one time because the kids' camps right. and stuff, and it couldn't be at the same time. So, you know, it was just pr it was just way too premature, and they couldn't give me a time frame when their hitch would be coming here. So it was just, you know, yeah. they couldn't make it work last year. But right. I think next year, if we get in early, get out in front of and they come bit. and look at a project so that they, they know we're going to be on their approved projects list, then maybe we can get a time frame and work with Matt to. Well, can we get? Can we get? They can come and look at the project any time, right? Yeah, they kind of want to know that that money's there, though. <laughs> Before. Yeah. We well, we can we can, we can do that anytime. We can, we can do that anytime. Yeah. I mean, if we if we if we want to do it, I mean, we can we can set that aside hmm. and have them come in, and we can you know we can get this all prearranged so they know what's going to be on their docket. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a if that project gets done, mm. that would be yeah fantastic. exactly mm -hmm. exactly. What what's their time frame as far as I mean, do they work into the fall or are they just kind of like a summer group? Mostly summer. Okay. Yeah, I think are the projects like begin. Yes, from all around the country. All right, so they they go back to college in the fall. Or exactly. Okay. Yeah, so this time of year they're they're still in school. Right. Uh, and then there's some training, and the projects get rolling like early June. So they'd have to get us done early June in order to, because they probably go back to school mid-August. So they'd have to get us done early June so that they would be done before the kids get out they, of school. Yeah, and go to camp. Right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, camp typically starts the week before 4th of July. Yeah. Yeah, so. The first three weeks of June would have, yeah. And it might be good, to, uh, you know, to have Adult, young adults staying in these camps and getting them ready for the kids, you know? Saying, hey, this shower leaks and this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, but Natticook's only a day camp. They don't do overnights. Oh, they don't. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> All right. Well, yeah, can you can continue to pursue that with them and see, if we, see how much we can, we can, you know, put in concrete now and then we can next year just less planning when it comes up? Right. Yeah, I think this was it was just too yep. early. Mm -hmm. right. You know, they needed the answers by before we had this meeting, so I knew we weren't gonna get the answers. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um all right. Um minutes. Everyone get a chance to look at the minutes? I make a motion to approve the Merrimack Conservation Commission meeting minutes dated March 18th, 2019 with changes as follows. Fire away, Jenner. Second. Second. Um, page two, line 12. Take out vice in front of Chair Perry. Page four, line 46. Um, Put an E on the end of on, uh, so it would be a bad one. <laughs> yeah. Page five, line 35, he will reach out to, Kyle, add the word to, Kyle Fox. Um, page six, line nine. I would switch was and what, so um, it would be kiosks like what was placed at Conservation Drive. Um, page seven, line 20, um, noted the issue exists only during a particular time of year only. So I would take out one of the onlys. You don't need two onlys in there. And that is all I have. Everyone on page three, line one. The weekend should be plural. <coughs> I always feel 
those could only get one that she missed. I know, right? That's my At least I feel like I've really read them closely. Damn it, she got all of them. Cindy, Cindy and I yeah. pretty yeah, you guys. <laughs> Do you have any other corrections, comments? All right. All those in favor? All right. Pass 700. Zero, zero. So, Commissioner Comments. Steve, you want to start? No. No, no comments. Okay. Uh, well, since we have talked about Earth Day a few times now in our discussions, I would encourage folks to think about Earth Day and all that goes on with Earth Day and see if there's an opportunity to take a few moments and recognize our Earth and get involved in some way or some fashion during this uh, upcoming weekend and following week. So that's all I got. So. Good. Pete? Uh, just a couple of things. I, I, to back Tim up uh, on Earth Day, I know last year uh, on the Saturday, the Parks and Rec this Saturday, last year we did it was the cleanup, the various sides of the roadways and the parks and stuff. and. Um, I asked people to do it. They had a huge crowd last year. I want to say like 300 people were involved, and there was quite a bit of trash picked up. I know my wife and I, we did Pearson Road because that was our neighborhood, that area, um, and Watson Park. And so uh, other people do it. I, if you come on out and do it. Um, that'd be, uh, it's a good thing. It's helpful. It's an amazing amount of trash they pick up. Mm. Um, also, for the commission, um, we might want to start thinking about the council has their retreat in June and uh, we might if there's anything on particular the commission would want the assistance of the council with might want to start talking about that and then that can be brought up uh, at the uh, at the retreat for the upcoming year so if there's anything in the minds of the commission here so food for thought and it gives us some time to think about it and put in uh, I know we get a packet from uh, all the different uh, uh, committees and uh, departments, so. Great, thank you for that reminder. That's gonna be helpful. Yep. Yeah. Something that I would say, and, and you made me think about with Earth Day, is um, we did, after all the rain today, it's probably the last thing on anyone's mind, but we did have a high fire warning going on there for a while, so for people just to be real careful, cause once it gets warm again and dry again, be careful where you throw those cigarettes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. One more thing. I'm just thinking about it now because no. it's on my list to do for Saturday. Nashua Regional Planning Commission's Hazardous Waste Collection Day is in Nashua. This Saturday? This Saturday. This, uh, oh, yeah. Um, so I think I go from 8 to noon. You can look it up on their website. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a safe way to get rid of those chemicals you don't know what to do with. Yep. Where is it happening? It's in Nashua at the DPW. At the DPW, okay. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Happy tax day. <laughs> <laughs> Taxation is theft. <laughs> My comments. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Say that. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. You yelled at me for stuff like that. Oh. <laughs> it's true. Don't you dare. Second. All right. All those in favor? <laughs> Seven zero zero passes at the eight thirty one. What's your middle name? Gage. Gage Gage Perry. No, <laughs> that's it. Gage Gage Perry. No, my first name is Calvin. Calvin. Yeah. Calvin Gage Perry. Yes. <laughs> Seriously, you yelled at me for that. What? You yelled at me for the rake of the forest joke, and now you're saying taxation is theft. Well, yeah, but that's not. That's, I'm not against any particular event. Taxation is theft. That was. You know, that was they're, you know they're wearing buttons up at the state house saying that, right? Yes. Well, that's true. You know who's wearing buttons up there. You know so that's a, that, that's you know a that was partisan the issue. You know that was the reason for our revolution, right? Yeah. That was different. <laughs>
Notre Dame is burning. It's I know. Not a that's coincidence. awful. Blessed that's Thunder awful. is a pest. <laughs> <laughs> She's sending you a message. Do you know the trails are in? Uh, you guys remember last year? Yeah, well, that's odd. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I it's, it's really it has no impact on us. I think they're dealing with the town legal staff to make that happen. Yeah, that's fine. No, we, 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 we talk, so, well.